All right. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the inaugural Emerging Leaders in Food and Ag Awards program. My name is Sarah De Levesque, and I'm the Director of Emerging Leaders in Food and Ag. I've spent the past 15 years working in different parts of the food and ag space. After finishing my graduate work at UC Davis, uh, any Aggies out there? I worked in the agricultural consulting space uh, for large scale agribusiness and with innovative startups in the food space uh, before transitioning my focus to developing content and resources to help build communities of impact across the food system. Emerging Leaders in Food and Ag is one of these communities. This is our first year um, and it has been uh, like it has been for many of us uh, a long 2020. Uh, so we are extremely excited this afternoon to finally be able to announce the top 20 award winners of 2020. So before we get started, I'd like to go through a few technical and logistical points since we're gather gathered here in this uh, new virtual space. First, uh, ask questions anytime. We love engagement. In fact, Emerging Leaders in Food and Ag was founded on the importance of engagement and interaction, uh, but more on that later. Uh, please use the chat function that we've already been using to say hello with, uh, located on the menu bar to ask questions and engage with the group. Uh, while we don't have a lot of Q&A planned for today, uh, we have a bunch planned for tomorrow's program, so it'll be good to get familiar with that function. Uh, and again, if you haven't already said hello, please do so now. Uh, second, I wanted to again remind you all that you are muted uh, to minimize any risk of interruption in the, during the program. But should you have any te technical difficulties or anything else, please again use the chat function to um, chat with us directly and we'll try to help you. Uh, and then finally, uh, there are about probably 100 different ways that you can uh, view this, this program on your screen today. Um, I can't, we couldn't possibly find all of them in our past few weeks of training, but what we recommend is that you watch in speaker view. So if you go to the upper right hand corner of your screen, uh, if your Zoom, um, if you choose, you can choose your, um, your Zoom, your view, excuse me. Um, if it says speaker view, then click on that and that'll give you speaker view. But if it says gallery view, uh, then you're already in speaker view and you're good to go. Okay, so before we get too far into the program, I wanted to pause and make sure I thanked our sponsors of today's program. Soilworks LLC, who we will be hearing from later today, um, and the Urban Food Systems Symposium out of Kansas State Horticulture and Urban Food Systems Program, Acres USA, and Countryside. Uh, their support has been uh, tremendous and very key in getting this initiative off the ground, so we offer our sincere thank you for that. When we started Emerging Leaders in Food and Ag, the vision was to create um, a community where all leaders in food and agriculture could gather together, no matter their community, their way of doing things, their position along the supply chain or in the food web, or where they were in their own leadership journey. We believe that in order to build a stronger and healthier food system, one that is able to address the great challenges that we face today, um, it'll be critical to bring together diverse participants with diverse perspectives to build solutions. The idea of emerging leaders was born out of this idea, an idea out of an idea, um, with three key goals. One, uh, to foster growth of leaders across food and agriculture, especially as we see agriculture struggling to recruit young people into the field and to retain them as they develop along their careers. It's more important than ever before to build leaders who are invested and committed to the sector. Uh, two, to bring participants from across the food system together to create dialogue and understanding and ultimately collaboration, which we'll hear more about tomorrow. And then three, to honor and celebrate those leaders who are already doing amazing things in the space, which is what brings us here today. So beyond building a community that facilitates opportunities to learn from and connect with leaders, we also wanted to celebrate some of the truly incredible things leaders are already doing across food and agriculture. So uh, in 2019, we launched the top 20 emerging leaders in food and ag campaign. We asked you, those working in the industry, to identify the leaders who are building a stronger and healthier food system from farm to consumer. 
We received more than 100 nominations of incredibly talented, driven, impactful, innovative individuals working on initiatives such as uh, agricultural production, uh, building new ways to deliver food to all kinds of communities, spreading the message of social and racial justice in our food system, addressing food waste, and so much more. We then, again, asked the larger food and ag community to narrow down these nominees to the top 40 finalists. Here's a short introduction of who our 40 finalists were and what they stand for. Pretty spectacular group, right? Uh, they represent a tremendous amount of passion and potential for our industry. So uh, just having those folks narrowed down was pretty incredible enough. It's hard to believe that we had to then narrow it down to 20 from this group, our top 20. But alas, we did. And today we will be announcing these top 20, five at a time throughout our program. In between each unveiling of five winners, we have some presentations from food systems leaders. At the end of our program, we will toast to our top 20. So please feel free to uh, grab a drink and have it ready for the end of our program. And after the program concludes, we invite you to stay with us for some small group networking for another uh, 15 to 20 minutes afterwards. Uh, it's a, gonna be a great opportunity to connect with others. Now, it gives me great pleasure to, at this point, introduce uh, the first five of our top 20 emerging leaders in food and ag. Alyssa is a leader in studying the impacts on climate change on agricultural practices in the Northeast and helping farmers adapt to changing conditions. She is passionate about sustainable agriculture and dedicated to community engagement. Her work places farmers as central agents in creating solutions to complex and pressing challenges and highlights the role of collaborative problem solving spaces.
inspires everyone around her to love food deeply and respect where it came from and where it brings us. She uses as many local ingredients as possible, often personally harvesting ingredients and connecting her clients directly with the food. a tireless advocate of sustainable and profitable agriculture for small and medium local farmers. As general manager, he has transformed the Briar Patch Co-op in Grass Valley, California into one of the top co-ops in the nation, offering expanded access to local and organic produce. Through his work and volunteering, he has been instrumental in improving food systems in his region and beyond. Katie's web-based lifestyle and food network is dedicated to creating inspiring and entertaining content. She works with leaders in the environmental and food space, bringing awareness and support to all involved. Cesare's 20 plus years of food work as a chef, entrepreneur, and business executive spans entity types and functions, all centered around healing connections through food. She has dedicated her life's work to building and seeking food system solutions that improve wealth and health for all people. She sees the bigger picture of the food system and is able to connect the dots in truly remarkable ways. Congratulations to Shireen Leong Schwartz, Chris Mayer, Katie Schaefer, and Cesare Assad. For those of you guys, uh, I, I apologize for the glitch in the first one. That was Alyssa White, who got was the first one announced. So congratulations to you as well, Alyssa. Uh, we'll pause here from the awards to introduce our first presentation of today's program. Kate Greenberg is Commissioner of Agriculture for the State of Colorado. She leads a staff of 300 employees across the department's eight divisions. As commissioner, Greenberg's key initiatives are to support and grow the next generation of Colorado's agricultural producers, increase high value food and market opportunities, incentivize soil, water, and climate stewardship, and enhance mental health awareness and services in the state's rural communities. She was kind enough to record this presentation for us today. Hello everyone. It is my honor to open the 2020 award ceremony for the emerging leaders in food and agriculture. Congratulations to each of you. My name is Kate Greenberg. I am the Colorado Commissioner of Agriculture. I was appointed to this position by Governor Polis about a year and a half ago. And previously I was organizing farmers and ranchers across the Western United States with the National Young Farmers Coalition. 
I'm here to kick off the award ceremony today and talk about leading through uncertain times. But I wanna be clear, I don't have any answers that you don't already have. I see these few minutes this morning as a chance to connect as peers and to strengthen our sense of camaraderie in this work, whether we know each other or not. But since I was given this time, I will take it to tell you this. You are awesome and your work is so incredibly meaningful. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it because it's obviously working. We've heard a lot recently that we are living in unprecedented times. And in some ways that's true, I suppose, but I'm not sure it's any more true than previous generations. It's not every year that we have a global pandemic, thank goodness, uh, and that does make 2020 unique, but the world is wrought with uncertainty at any given time. And while leaders are needed in times of calm, leaders are needed most in times of crisis. This time of crisis, which continues for many months and has continued for many months, has left me with a lot of questions about how to show up. What kind of leader do I want to be in this moment? And what kind of leader do I need to be to respond to this moment while also helping usher in the vision for the future that I believe in? I imagine that you have a version of this question for yourself, and I'm so curious to know how you're tackling it. But unprecedented or not, what a year 2020 has been. COVID-19, of course, has rocked our worlds. In food and ag, we've seen uh, massive ripple effects throughout our supply chains. Uh, critical workers you know, waking up morning, noon, and night to continue going to work, getting food on the table for the rest of us, regardless of if it puts them in harm's way. We see ag businesses changing how they do business, changing their marketing channels almost overnight. Millions of families across the states are experiencing incredible hardship, and we have lost members of our community in food and ag to COVID-19. And as the world is wrestling with the pandemic, we are at the same time waking up to the horrors of systemic racism. Loathsome acts of violence against people of color persist. And as we witness these acts of violence, they cast light on the systems of oppression that persist in our society. As someone like all of you who is committed to the systems of food and agriculture, it is inherent to my work. It is part of my responsibility as a leader of the Colorado Department of Agriculture and as someone who is serving the people of Colorado to do the work of anti-racism, both within myself and within the institution I run, the Department of Ag. We at the department are moving deeper into this work and despite the inevitable bumps and blunders, I know that all of us, myself, my team, the entire state of Colorado and every single person we serve will be better for it. Leadership isn't about being right or knowing everything. To me, it's really about showing up to the moment at hand, to bearing witness with open hearts and minds, responding with as much wisdom as we can garner in that moment, and anchoring ourselves into a big vision of what's possible and also of what's right, a vision that empowers others to join us. I've been reading Lord of the Rings throughout the pandemic, and it has certainly, for one, given me some very good perspective on crisis. As Gandalf references early in the book, and which I want to ask of you, as well as of myself now, what will you do with the time that you are given? What will I do with the time that I am given? We can't change our moment in history, but we can certainly try and make something of it. There's a lot of heaviness around us. I certainly feel this every day, and I can imagine that many of you do as well. Yet woven into the heaviness and tragedy of this time is so much potential, so much opportunity, whether it's capitalizing on this incredible demand that consumers have to connect to the land and to their farmers and ranchers to know where their food comes from, 
to developing new marketing opportunities for farmers and ranchers of all scales at all points in their career, developing equitable points of access so that folks who are committed, anybody who's committed and excited and ready to step into agriculture has the ability to do so. We have seen vulnerabilities in our supply chains and have the opportunities to build them in such a way that makes them more resilient, more equitable. We've got tools to tackle the climate crisis, the crisis that really continues to loom over us uh, throughout even 2020. Uh, it's going to be with us for a long time and we have the chance to have agriculture and our food system help lead the way. We have the chance to invest in the health of our soil and in our mental health, in the mental health of our families, our friends, our communities. We've seen more awareness this year around the critical work that people in food and ag do every day, and we have the chance to make sure that every single person in our industry is treated with dignity and fairness. And we have the opportunity before us to end systemic racism and build a more equitable future. In thinking about it, a year like 2020 may be more unprecedented for what's possible rather than what's heartbreaking. And of course, there's so much that is heartbreaking. But a year like this creates an opening. And you are here today because you step up to meet that opening. You step up to meet this moment. And how lucky are we that you do? Things are certainly weird out there and they are tough for so many people. So stay focused through the storm, stick together, keep full of love. Thank you, each of you, for everything you do. Thank you for allowing me the time to speak with you today and congratulations. Thank you to Kate for those great words. How right she is that we have already seen so many great examples of leadership among this group today. And while this is a very heavy time for many, it is also full of opportunity. So keep it up and continue to adapt, collaborate, and lead together. It's time now to meet our next five emerging leaders in Food and Ag Award winners. Although still early in her career, Lindsay is a leader in diversity, equity, and inclusion, trailblazing ways to ensure cooperative extension's relevance for the next generation of professionals and clients. Her leadership in the field is an example to agents looking to express their excitement and passion and make a significant contribution early in their careers. is an amazing leader with over 15 years of leadership in food and agriculture. As an emerging leader, she has traveled all over the nation to represent her business and community. Ladder Livestock in Savory, Wyoming, 
Eamon works tirelessly in both the cattle and sheep industries, as well as farms and raises his family. The ranch is leading the way in water resource development. Helen has been working in community food systems since 2010. She was named executive director of the National Farm to School Network in 2019, where she continues to serve as a leader, role model, mentor, and visionary for equitable and just food systems. Sophie has mobilized young farmers and their supporters for policy change since 2012 and helped lead the National Young Farmers Coalition to win historic investments for young farmers in the 2018 Farm Bill. She is a member of U.S. Representative Antonio Delgado's Agricultural Advisory Committee and speaks nationally and internationally on young farmer issues. Congratulations to Lindsay Lunsford, Kim Redden, Eamon O'Toole, Helen Dumbalis, and Sophie Igoth. Okay, we've already made it through 10 of our top 20 award winners, a way to go, and 10 more to go. Uh, but first, I want to pause here to share a message from our lead sponsor, Soilworks LLC, who have spent decades working with farmers to help them address the factors limiting their soil health potential. Have a listen here. With the chaos that's going on across the world, health is more of a concern than ever before. Make no mistake and please believe the consumers are asking for better food. They're asking for more nutritious food and they're asking for chemical free and non GMO food. What we have found is we've been called the breath of fresh air people because we do a healthy check on the soil. We do a stress test on the soil with the penetrometer. If things are too tight, minerals can't move and microbes can't reproduce and do their job. If the nutrients aren't getting from the soil to the plant, it will show up on the refractometer measuring the sugar content of the tissue or of the fruit or vegetable. And last but not least, looking at the EC or the conductivity of the soil. We all wear quite a few hats throughout the growing season. And I'm a grower just like you guys. In fact, I'm an organic grower. And that's why we developed GSR calcium because we at SoilWorks, we look at not reacting to symptoms but correcting the cause. If you've done a health assessment on your soil and you find out there's a little bit too much tension in your soil, you have a low sugar content in your plant, or the ECs of your soil isn't consistent, GSR calcium should be your first choice. Low volume water, suspendable and applied calcium that is available and electrically active to start relaxing your soil, allowing water penetration as well as air not only that, feeding the microbes and increasing the calcium content of your tissue in the plants that you're growing. If you're not at 2% calcium, 
don't be afraid to give us a call because grams or a few pounds of our calcium has put tissue levels in the plants that has surprised growers for years. Genesis Soil Rate. It is the true beginning. GSR calcium will reduce salt and sodium, will relax high magnesium soil, and help the environment to become more natural. GSR calcium can be an all-in-one calcium that makes a big boost for the crops that you're growing. Please believe me that we at Soil Works have over 30 years of experience of correcting the cause, not reacting to symptoms. Our GSR calcium is the beginning of correcting many of the problems. And you can take that to the bank. Thanks to Soil Works LLC for their support of this program. Uh, soil health is one of several topics we will dive much deeper into during tomorrow's conference program. We do have a featured presentation from Dr. Ratan Lal, who is a World Food Prize winner of 2020, who will be talking and addressing, uh, talking about and addressing soil health and its importance to our food system. Um, for those of you who have not yet signed up for that program, please uh, check out the full agenda on our website, www.emergingleadersfa.com, and we hope you'll be able to join us. We have another great lineup of speakers there tomorrow, a panel discussion, Q&A with all of our presenters, one-on-one -on -one networking, and a breakout discussion. So lots happening tomorrow, and we hope you can join us. Uh, now let's get back to our award winners. I am pleased to introduce our next five winners. Sisu Farms, the Hollies, employ regenerative practices. Sisu is a Finnish concept described as stoic determination, tenacity of purpose, grit, bravery, resilience, and hardiness. This is a great description of this hardworking couple. Kiara is U.S. Director and co-founder of Future Food Institute, an international NGO aiming to inspire and empower individuals, companies, and communities to rethink our food system. In her research, work, and volunteer activities, Kiara has demonstrated tremendous leadership. has created several organizations that focus on food redistribution and the elimination of food waste. He is a brilliant human and possesses a mindfulness and dedication to being of service to our people and planet that is inspiring. provides local, fresh, sustainable agriculture products by visiting farms across southwestern Colorado and delivering the produce in her refrigerated truck. 
Working with farmers, ranchers, and artisans, Mickey is making amazing contributions to support a healthy, productive food system. co-founded Soul Fire Farm in 2011 with the mission to end racism in the food system and reclaim our ancestral connection to land. She facilitates powerful food sovereignty programs and domestic and international organizing toward equity in the food system. Leah has been recognized as a farmer, teacher, and author. Her book, Farming While Black, Soul Fire Farm's Practical Guide to Liberation on the Land, was published in 2018. Congratulations to Isla and Asa Holly, Kiara Chakini, Turner Wyatt, Vicki Renda, and Leah Penniman. And speaking of Leah Penniman, we are lucky today to be able to share thoughts she prepared just for you all. Leah has been an incredible leader in the effort to create a more socially just food system. She will share a bit about the journey of black farmers throughout our history and about her farm um, and how it is addressing inequity today. Greetings, my name is Leah Penniman and I am the co-director and farm manager at Soul Fire Farm and the author of Farming While Black. Our ancestral grandmothers in West Africa braided seeds of okra, molokia, and levant cotton into their hair before being forced to board transatlantic slave ships. They hid sesame, black-eyed pea, rice, and melon seeds in their locks. They stashed away amara kale, gourd, sorrel, basil, tamarind, and cola in their tresses. Their seed was their most precious legacy, and they believed against odds in a future of tilling and reaping the earth. They believed that their descendants would exist and that we would receive and honor the gift of the seed. With the seed, our grandmothers also braided their ecosystemic and cultural knowledge. They braided the wisdom of sharing the land, such as the Husa farm co-op system of the Krobo people. They braided the wisdom of sharing labor and wealth, such as the Dokwe worker co-ops and the Susu credit unions of the Dahomey people. They braided the wisdom of caring for sacred earth, such as the dark earth compost of Ghana, the raised beds of the Ovambo people and the poly cultures of Nigeria. When our ancestors arrived on this continent, they tragically encountered a very different system of relating to land and food. Here, the land was not shared, but stolen and privatized. Authorized by the doctrine of discovery, settlers perpetuated genocide against the indigenous people, killing 90% of the population, displacing those who survived and stealing their land. Yeah. Sorry. land. Our African ancestors learned that even when they tried to own land, they were punished. Despite the broken promise of 40 acres and a mule after emancipation, black farmers purchased nearly 16 million acres of land on their own, almost all of which is gone, in part because the Klan, the White Caps, and other white supremacist groups lynched black landowners for the audacity of leaving the plantation, killing over 4,000 whose names we know. Our ancestors learned that even the federal government did not want them to own land. The U.S. Department of Agriculture systematically discriminated against black farmers, leading to foreclosures and evictions. Which brings us to where we are today, with approximately 98% of the agricultural land in this country being white owned. Here in this country, our ancestors found that labor was not honored but exploited. Millions of agricultural experts were kidnapped from their homes across Africa, forced into bondage to build the wealth of this nation. 
Even after chattel slavery officially ended, the exploitation of labor morphed into new forms such as convict leasing. Southerners created new laws called the Black Codes, which criminalized loitering and unemployment, filling the prisons with Black people who were rented back to the plantation, a system that continues to this day. Those not forced onto the plantation through incarceration were often trapped there as sharecroppers in a perpetual cycle of debt and poverty. Even today, farm workers are not protected by basic labor laws and do not have the right to a day off, overtime pay, collective bargaining, and other protections. Approximately 85% of farm labor is performed by people of color, often undocumented people. Today, being a farm owner is one of the whitest professions in the US, while being a farm laborer is among the brownest. At the same time, our ancestors learned that the food system here was not about honoring the earth, rather about extracting her resources. Industrial agriculture had burned up over 50% of the soil carbon catalyzing climate change and devastating biodiversity. Despite the heartbreak and terror they experienced, there were those in every generation who remembered the seeds they had inherited and the wisdom they carried. Cooperative land ownership and cooperative labor were remembered by Fannie Lou Hamer in creating Freedom Farm in Mississippi with other sharecroppers and by the Sherrods in creating the first ever community land trust in Georgia. Right relationship with land was remembered by George Washington Carver, one of the founders of regenerative and organic agriculture, and Booker T. Watley, one of the progenitors of the farm to table movement and diversified small farms. Both who spread the word about caring for soil and community through the first ever extension agency out of Tuskegee University, inspiring generations of organic farmers from the early 1900s till now. Right relationship to our human communities was remembered by the Black Panther Party who fed 20,000 children free breakfast every morning, catalyzing the federal school food programs. And by the Federation of Southern Cooperatives, National Black Farmers Association, Land Loss Prevention Project, and others who fought for the rights of farmers and farm workers who were struggling to save their land. When I started farming over 20 years ago, I began to wonder, how could I honor the legacy of the seeds braided into my ancestors' hair? I wondered if I could help create a farm that was based on the wisdom carried in those seeds. In 2010, Soul Fire Farm was born from this yearning with a mission to reclaim ancestral belonging to land and to end racism and exploitation in the food system. We are busy on this land, regenerating our 80 acres through Afro-Indigenous farming and forestry practices and sharing the harvest of that land at no cost to the doorsteps of people impacted by state violence. We are equipping the next generation of black and brown farmers through our training programs, mentorship, and connection to land and resources. We're using this sacred land as a tool to heal from the trauma of centuries of land-based oppression. And we're holding that sacred land cooperatively, giving nature rights and a vote on our council and returning land rights to the Mohican people through a cultural respect easement. We wondered if one small farm could make a big change and we're excited by the progress we're already seeing. Our regenerative farming practices have restored the soil to its pre-colonial levels of organic matter and increased native biodiversity. Neighbors across our region are pitching in to cover the cost of vegetable deliveries to those in need, allowing hundreds of people to receive a weekly share of fresh food. Thousands of new black and brown farmers and food justice activists have been trained in 35 states and the majority of them are making waves in the food system. And for the first time in decades, we're seeing the slightest increase in the number of black farmers nationally. Our alumni even catalyzed a new land trust to share the lands back with people who have been dispossessed, as well as a reparations map to return stolen wealth to earth stewards for their crucial work. And we cross pollinate with other movement leaders like D-Town Farm, Rise and Root Farm, and the Black Dirt Collective to change the national conversation about food and land. And folks are finally listening. From presidential candidates to major media outlets, society is waking up to the fact that we cannot have a healthy food system if we ignore racial justice and if we ignore the health of the land. Are you willing to carry on the seeds of sovereignty and fight for the rights of all peoples to carry on those seeds or will you let them die out? As Pablo Neruda said, 
Pardon me if when I want to tell the story of my life, it's the land I talk about. This is the land. It grows in your blood and you grow. If it dies in your blood, you die out. Thanks to Leah for sharing this important story with us. It's one we need to continue to tell in order to transform our food systems community. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have made it to our final award winners announcement. Here are the final five of our top 20 emerging leaders in food and ag award winners. Jose is raising Asian water buffalo for dairy. He is creating partnerships with landowners, providing meat and milk to local families and restaurants, and using the herd to help restore fertility to his land. He uses a mobile milking trailer to allow for rotational grazing with minimal stress on the cows being milked because the dairy follows the herd. Jennifer's Food Company is one of the few to actually pay farmers to expand regenerative agriculture. She's on a mission to make products that are healthier for you and our planet. With a natural propensity for adventure and discovery, Michael consistently identifies innovative business concepts and brings them to market with a focus on products that are environmentally friendly. He speaks regularly about sustainable business development, particularly in agriculture, and still finds time to grow organic food on his family farm. Ellen and her husband Jesse have become national leaders in raising mangalitsa pigs and have turned a raw piece of property into a thriving ranch as well as an agritourism destination. They are a shining example of emerging agricultural heroes. Benjamin is passionate about food, health, and justice, and is knowledgeable, committed, and full of integrity. He leads Top Leaf Farms in Oakland, California, where he consults to provide expertise on regenerative agricultural models, broad acre land management, 
in urban development projects that harness biological processes to improve the overall health of our bodies, our communities, and our planet. Congratulations, Jose Miranda, Jennifer Coker, Michael Warren, Ellen Olson, and Benjamin Farr. Okay, so we know our top 20. It's almost time to toast our winners. And I'm pretty sure it's almost five o'clock somewhere. So if you haven't already gotten a drink ready for our toast, then please do so quickly. Uh, first, before we get to the toast, I'd like to thank our sponsors one more time. Soilworks, Urban Food System Symposium out of the Cal Kansas State Horticulture and Urban Food Systems Program, Acres USA and Countryside. We are so grateful for the support you've given us uh, in getting this program off the ground. Um, I'd also like to thank all of you for joining us today and in honoring and celebrating um, the wonderful emerging leaders uh, that we had gathered here, both the nominees and the winners. Thank you. I'll remind you all to please join us tomorrow for our longer conference program. Today we covered the celebrate portion of our mission by honoring these incredible leaders. Tomorrow we have a great program planned that will focus on the grow and connect portion of our mission. Uh, remember to visit www.emergingleadersfa.com if you haven't registered already. Okay, hopefully that gave you guys enough time to grab a drink. Uh, I do have mine here, if you can see in my virtual room. Um, and it's time. So one more time, I would like to present our top 20 emerging leaders in food and ag of 2020. They are inspiring, they are innovative, they are passionate, and they are making our food system stronger, healthier, more just, more productive, and more sustainable. Um, please raise your glass if you have one, water, drink, whatever. Please raise your glass, thank you, I see some of you raising it, um, to uh, the 2020 Emerging Leaders in Food and Ag Award winners. May your endeavors continue to serve your communities, strengthen our food system, and inspire the next generation of leaders to dream and do more. Thank you and cheers. So, thank you all again for joining us and we hope to see you tomorrow at our conference program. We now invite you to stick around um, and do some small group, net group networking. Um, as we said, connection is a very important thing to us at Emerging Leaders.